One of the portions of the book of Revelation whose meaning is hotly debated is the reference to Mystery Babylon in chapter 17. It appears that this will be the location of the Antichrist governmental and spiritual headquarters. Where is Mystery Babylon? Is it Jerusalem, New York, Mecca, Rome? Or will it be ancient Babylon rebuilt? For a fascinating discussion of these questions by a Bible prophecy expert named Bill Solace, stay tuned. Lamb and Lion Ministries presents Christ in Prophecy, a program that focuses on the fundamentals of Bible prophecy, showing how current events in the news relate to biblical predictions of end time events and the soon return of Jesus. Now, here's your host, Dr. David Reagan. Greetings in the name of Jesus, our blessed hope, and welcome to Christ in Prophecy. My associate, Nathan Jones, and I are delighted to have a friend and Bible prophecy colleague with us today as our special guest. He is Bill Solis. He is the founder and director of Prophecy Depot Ministries in La Quinta, California. Bill is a prolific writer and conference speaker. He is probably the best known for his insightful book about Psalm 83 and the war that is depicted in it. Welcome to Christ in Prophecy, brother. David, thank you. Nathan, it's yeah. great to be with you. And I, I wanted to personally thank you for your May edition of uh, the Lamplighter magazine, where I got my new nickname, the Star Trek Eschatologist. <laughs> Boy, that was thanks well, for that. Uh, yeah, and, and I called you that because I said you go where nobody else is uh, 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 will will go. Well, that's created some repercussions everywhere I go. People think I've become a pest exterminator now. <laughs> they, they don't know what an eschatologist is. I've got to explain to them eschatos means last or final in the Greek, and ology is a Study of, I study the last and final days. Where in the world is La Quinta, California? It is a couple hours east of Los Angeles. It's better known kind of by Palm Springs. It's a oh, okay, connecting okay, city okay. out there. All right, well, Captain, are you ready to embark <laughs> on a, another trip? Let's go let's, boldly go. <laughs> let's boldly go. Let's boldly go to the subject of Mystery Babylon. I'm going to go to the source text, which is Revelation 17, verses 1 through 6. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which is full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead was a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Okay, Bill, I think when it comes to Mystery of Babylon, there's questions like who and what and where. Let's start with the where. Very popular, I'd say John Walvoord, for instance, in the Bible Knowledge Commentary, believes that the Babylon, or this Mystery of Babylon, this harlot, is actually a rebuilt city of Babylon. What do you think? Well, I agree. That is a very popular view. It's held by guys like Mark Hitchcock, Dr. Mark Hitchcock, Joe Rosenberg, and, and quite a few. Uh, I always qualify because at the beginning of the program, uh, David mentioned several candidate cities for Mystery Babylon. And it is a great city, we're told, in Revelation 17, 18. But I remind people that according to 2 Peter 1.20 that no prophecy is subject to private interpretation. So we have to look at the details of the prophecy. And we've got to go through the interpretations given for these other candidate cities and narrow it down to the, the actual one. Because four of them can't be, there's five candidate cities and four of them can't be the right ones. And I'm not advocating that I know the right one, but I've, I think the body of evidence sways toward the direction of Rome. That will be my argument as I present this today. But there are three primary reasons that I have concerns with rebuilt Babylon. Let's start with number one, let's capitalize rebuilt. Unlike the four other candidate cities you mentioned, Babylon is not a significant city right now. Saddam Hussein tried to build it a little bit, but the other cities are significant cities and they could become that city. But the bottom line is you'd have to rebuild Babylon and it's in a war-torn area. You've got schisms between the Shiites and the Sunnis. It's not likely. Now, some of the advocates for this theory believe that it, Dubai, they remind us that Dubai was built rapidly as a city. Yeah. Number two, my concern is, let's capitalize mystery and mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. 
by definition in the Old Testament a mystery was something that was concealed. In the New Testament it is revealed. And the angel reveals this mystery to us in Revelation 17, 7 through, verses 7 through 8, 18 rather. He tells us in verse 9 that it's a city that sits on seven hills, which at the time when John wrote that was the notorious name of Rome. They even had coinage at the time with the goddess of Roma sitting on the seven hills. Um, it is also, he tells us in verse 15, that it is a global reach. It sits on tribes, tongues, uh, peoples and nations. And most importantly, I think in the last verse, 18, he tells us, he, he says that it, the woman you, you saw, referring to Mystery Babylon, in this vision given to John, he says, it is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So, let's, let's break that down. The woman he saw, past tense, he saw this woman. She was sitting on the waters, the, the multiples, the tribes, tongues, and nations. Uh, and it is the city that reigns over the kings of the earth. It was only be one city. It was a city at the time John would clearly recognize was Rome. It doesn't say it will be the city that reigns over the kings of the earth. It says it mm -hmm. is. And then lastly, I think I find this to be a very disturbing verse for these other advocates of uh, that have looked at Mystery Babylon, and that is in Revelation 18:20. And what we find in that verse, it talks about. Uh, rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. I actually sometimes, and I don't normally do this, I quote the NIV on this verse, because it says, God has judged her for the way she has treated you. Referring to, he's talking about the holy apostles. Now, there were, to me, that means that two or more apostles, plural, had to be judged and executed under the authorities of what this end times Babylon is going to be. And that would be, you had Peter, Paul, Andrew, and uh, Jesus' brother James. These were apostles. Now, when you look at some of these other candidate cities, and in particular rebuilt Babylon, Iraq, which apostles were killed there? Was it John? Was it Matthew? Was it? No, none of them were even alive at that time. Well, what do you do well, with what, Isaiah? Oh, I'm sorry, Dave. I was going to say, one argument you yeah. did not mention is that in Isaiah it says that when Babylon is destroyed by the Medes, it will become as Sodom and Gomorrah. Isaiah 13, 20. And people all, yeah. and will never be rebuilt again, it says. And uh, the advocates often say, well, it wasn't destroyed in the same way as Sodom. It doesn't say that. It says it will become as Sodom and Gomorrah, and it has become as Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. It will never be inhabited, nor will be settled from generation to generation. Right. So, wouldn't that break that prophecy if it's a rebuilt Babylon? Uh, correct, yeah. So, okay. that's another text that I uh, right, argue Let me ask you then, uh, some say that it's going to be Jerusalem. Now, how they get that, I don't know, but what do you think? Well, it's not one of the more popular views. That's right. Uh, but it does; it is one, and it deserves a commentary. But you know, the, it says in Revelation eighteen twenty one that when Mystery Babylon is is destroyed, it will be thrown down and be uh, never be found anymore. It has an expiration date. Mystery Babylon has you know what Jerusalem does not have an expiration yeah, date. It goes on Amen. Into the Matter of fact, uh, this is where in Je Jeremiah it's three eternal, seven. In fact. <laughs> yeah, Jeremiah three seventeen is where Jesus is going to set his throne up. In Jerusalem during the Messianic Kingdom. So, for me, I can't get past that, that contradiction there. Well, what about another one? Yeah. You, what but, about uh, Istanbul or Constantinople? Oh, you're talking about with the Mecca theory and things like well, that. Well, you hear people say no, that. I'd rather get into Jerusalem. Oh, I, yeah. Um, well, we did Jerusalem. Let's uh, talk about. Uh, Washington D.C., America. Oh New yeah, York New York City. City. Oh yeah, You're in New York City all the time. Of course, America is not quite 250 years old. And this so. is becoming more and more popular. I, I just find this all the time. People think the United States is it. That's the newer theory. Yeah. They even say Hollywood. That's the newer theory. <laughs> okay. All right. What, what about it? What okay, about New York That's the newer city? theory. Um, I would say basically which apostles were killed in New York City according <laughs> to Revelation 18:20. That's a good point. Uh, what seven hills are we talking about? Well, the advocates of this tend to say it's not really saying seven hills. It's saying seven continents. Uh -huh. It's in the, sits in the midst of seven continents. And the, but the, the Greek word mm -hmm. for hills or mountains in these translations is oros, and it cannot be translated as continents. It's either hills or mountains. Yes, and also this is going to be the headquarters of the Antichrist. And uh, the Bible doesn't indicate that the Antichrist is going to be in the United States of America. Well, plus America hasn't killed all the prophets and the apostles, right? So, how could... I think that's a bit of a problem for that theory. It's a yeah. huge problem. Yeah. Well, that brings us to then uh, the one that uh, I, I think is the newest, and that's uh, the one that uh, of Mecca. 
What about that? You just recently had a major debate on that, which is available on video at your website, right? Yeah, it's called uh, The Identity of Mystery Babylon, Mecca or Rome, and it was a debate I did with uh, best-selling author, New York Times sell author, Joel Richardson. Yeah, well, tell our people how you can, they can get in touch with you. Uh, uh, what is your website? Uh, that's prophecydepot.com, like Home Depot, prophecydepot.com, yeah. and we've got the products there, and that DVD is there. Now, it's a three-hour discussion, yes. a debate. That's not only a debate, but it's very informative and educational. I think the viewers will find a lot of educational information that they may not have known. And what is the title of that video? The the identity of mystery Babylon, okay. Mecca or Rome. We specifically narrowed it down to those two cities. He's advocating that it's Mecca, and of course I'm taking the Rome. Okay, we've got about five minutes in this segment, so let's go. Tell us why it cannot be Mecca. Well, uh, one of the things that comes up in his presentation is, you know, he's overlooking two powerful, what I believe are Muslim prophetic wars, Muslim dominated wars in Psalm 83 and Ezekiel 38, which I and many of our colleagues believe happened before the tribulation period. Remember, the harlot world religion comes up right around the time of the tribulation period. So, if there are Muslim wars, epic Muslim wars beforehand, that would have an effect on really this location and the religion, the dominant religion at that time. So, let's look at Psalm 83, for instance. So you've got ten populations. This is a final confrontation between the Arabs and the Jews, involving nations that surround the com, uh, surrounding nations that share common borders with Israel. They're defeated by the Israeli defense forces. Now, all those nations are predominantly Muslim. There's ten populations. You know, you've got Jordan and uh, Lebanon with Hezbollah up there, and you've got Syria and Iraq, and probably Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and you've got the Palestinians in there and the Hamas, etc. Muslim countries. Uh, right now, Joel Richardson's argument is, well, there's 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. It's obviously got to be the the religion that dominates. Well, I would say after these two wars in Ezekiel 38, I'll just mention in a minute, there's 600 million roughly Muslims involved in these wars that will be either killed, exiled, imprisoned. Uh, by God Himself? Yeah, in Ezekiel 38, you have nine different, entirely different populations. It's not the same prophecy. Apart from Russia, the other ones like uh, Turkey and Iran, some of the countries of the northern continent of Africa, some of the breakaway republics of the Soviet Union, those are predominantly all Muslim right now. So you've got massive Muslim populations, and that, that, that is going to be defeated, an invasion of Israel defeated by the Lord with earthquake, flooding rains, hailstone, and brimstone. So by the, you know, I, I say Psalm 83 will you punch a gut to the gut of Islam. Ezekiel 38 will follow, be an uppercut to the jaw of Islam, so that by the time we get into the tribulation period, Allah will have lost his Akbar. You know, they, Allah Akbar means he's the greater God. These terrorists always shout Allah Akbar all the time. You, you know? mentioned a disillusion of millions and millions of Muslims at constant defeat of Allah through these prophetic wars. Yeah, and they're already converting away from Islam yeah. because they don't like the terrorism and this yeah. sort of thing. But I, would, I, was, I had a red flag also in the debate because. Joel Richardson is actually a very good researcher, and in his Islamic Antichrist book, he also believes the Antichrist will be a Muslim. He noted a lot of historical sources that maybe thought that, that it would be a Muslim Antichrist, but he didn't come up with any. I, I asked him, I said, but just before 2008, when Walid Shubat and Joel Richardson put their thoughts together that it would be Mecca, can you show, tell me any, anybody else, church fathers, reformers, or anything? And I, 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 he couldn't, so that was a red flag to me. This means it's basically their new theory. And I reminded the viewers on the debate, I said, listen, we had church fathers who believed it was Rome. You, know, you had Lactantanius, Tertullian, Irenaeus, Jerome. We had reformers who believed it was Rome, Martin Luther, John Knox, John Calvin, John Tyndale, John Wycliffe. We have contemporaries who believe it's Rome, and I believe you two are among that list. Jan Markell's on that list. You had J. Vernon McGee, uh, Dwight Pentecost, Clarence Larkin, Grant Jeffrey, Tim LaHaye, Hal Lindsey, uh, Warren Wiersbe, Mike Gendron has been on your program before, Dave Hunt. So, I had a problem with that. I mean, you know, it's okay. You can come up with a new theory. It, Daniel 12 tells us there will be times where an information will increase and uh, the visions will be uh, un unsealed. Uh, people will travel to and fro in Daniel 12 verse 4, but uh, I think that's of concern. Well, I would agree, and I, I also think it's absurd, and I mean absurd, to think that the uh, Antichrist is going to be a Muslim. Any Muslim who would go to Jerusalem and declare himself to be God would be killed by the Muslims. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be killed by us, it would be killed by the Muslims. Well, I think your book on that, David, I mean, was just, outstanding, uh, yes. dealing with the Antichrist. It's just, it's just crazy. And, um, uh, uh, and is Israel going to make a, a covenant uh, with a, a Muslim leader? <laughs> I don't think so. Right. No, no, no. I, agree. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't know. I, it, it just, I think you're right on target, and I hope people, <coughs> excuse me, will get a copy of your uh, video. 
because it is very, very informative. You did a lot of research and so did he. But I think that uh, you made it very clear it's not going to be Mecca and it's not going to be a Muslim Antichrist. I, I agree with that, yeah. Okay. Well, in just a moment we'll be back and we're going to uh, ask Bill the crucial question. If it's not Jerusalem, if it's not Mecca, if it's not rebuilt Babylon, what in the world is it? What is Mystery Babylon? Do you find the entire book of Revelation to be a mystery as many Christians do? If so, you need to get a copy of my book, Wrath and Glory. This book is 250 pages long and is written for the person in the pew. In that regard, my oldest daughter was the first person to read it, and when she gave me her response to it, she said, Dad, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I understood every bit of it. And when I asked her why that would hurt my feelings, she said, Well, I figured you wrote it for theologians. Well, folks, I got a good laugh out of that. I hastened to explain to her that she had just given me the greatest compliment she could because the book was written for people just like her. The book is called Wrath and Glory because Jesus is returning in great wrath to punish the rebellious nations and peoples of the world. But then, after He has poured out the wrath of God, He is going to reign in glory and majesty from Mount Zion in Jerusalem, and the whole world is going to be flooded with peace, righteousness, and justice. This book will take you through the book of Revelation chapter by chapter, giving you down to earth, easy to understand explanations of the message. And it is a glorious message for believers. That's because the fundamental message of the book of Revelation is we win in the end. You can get a copy of the book for a donation of $20 or more, and that includes the cost of shipping. Just call us at the number you see on the screen or place your order through our website at lambline.com. If you call, please do so Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Central Time. And as a special bonus, with each order we will include a copy of this video, Revelation Revealed. It is a 75-minute video in which I take you through the entire book of Revelation. So, the Revelation book and the video can be yours for a donation of $20 or more, including the cost of shipping. Just ask for offer number 822. Welcome back to Christ and Prophecy and our interview with Bill Salas about the identity of Mystery Babylon in the book of Revelation. All right, Bill, you've discounted Jerusalem, you've discounted the rebuilt Babylon, you've discounted Mecca, you've even discounted New York City and Hollywood and Istanbul, <laughs> Shanghai, you name it, you've discounted them all, and you said that Rome is Mystery Babylon. Why? Well, I haven't discounted Shanghai yet. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but we will discount that because no holy apostles were <laughs> martyred there. Okay. And that was, of course, by way of review. It's a city that sits on seven hills. That's Rome. There were the holy apostles were killed there for vindication of Revelation 18:20 when it's judged. It is the popular view at this point. It listed the names of the church fathers and the reformers and the contemporaries like ourselves who subscribe to that. But additionally, the other reasons I believe it's the body of evidence sways in the direction of Rome is that at the time it was a code word. Babylon was a code word for Rome, to avoid persecution. First Peter 5.13 mentions this in his epistle. He says, She who is in Babylon, elect together with you, greets you, and so does Mark. And he was in Rome son. at the time. He was. And this was the common understanding. If you wanted to avoid the persecution blatantly, you had yeah, to... Use another word. Hey, John was a prisoner on the Isle of Patmos. He was a prisoner of the Roman Empire. He couldn't write a document naming Rome, and <laughs> he couldn't do that. Yeah, most of our colleagues, no matter what city they subscribe to as being Mystery Babylon, would agree that is the code word for Babylon. <laughs> We mentioned earlier it was even the coinage had the goddess Roma sitting on seven hills. It was commonly understood that it was Rome back at that time. Also, uh, you had read in the beginning that this, this mystery Babylon, this harlot, is drunk with the blood of the saints and the martyrs of Jesus. Okay, mm -hmm. We've got two different martyrdom scenarios there. The blood of the saints, I would say that could very well be the Inquisitions when mm -hmm. out of Rome you had you know, between the 12th and the 16th right. century, you had, you know, literally they say millions. Of or during the Reformation, the, the slaughter of the Protestants. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And and it says in Revelation 18.5, it, it's that God is going to judge that city. Is this city going to get a pass? I mean, He judged Sodom and Gomorrah, etc., and that sort of thing. It says, one translation is in Revelation 18.5, for her sins are piled as high as heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Okay. And when we look at Rome, as it started with what was first called pagan Rome, with the Roman Empire, 
and then it morphed into Papal Rome, where of course now you have the Vatican. There is no shortage of crimes and sins that have been uh, perpetrated by a few with pagan Rome. It was put to death God's Son. Jesus Christ. It martyred Christians for over three centuries. Some sources say over 210,000 during the time of the spread of Christianity. Uh, killed 1.1 million people, mostly Jews, according to the Jewish historian Josephus, by 70 AD. Destroys the temple and Jerusalem in 70 AD. Um, enjoyed, destroyed it again in 135 AD with Bar Kokhba revolt. It killed hundreds of thousands of Jews between 132 and 135. So you're seeing Rome as the Roman Empire, but then it just morphed into the Holy Roman Empire, and then it morphed into the Roman Catholic Church. You're seeing no distinction between the three. Absolutely. As, as okay. Rome, the Roman Empire started to disintegrate, they found it favorable to em embrace Christianity to maintain its power for as long as it's good. So Rome hasn't ended, it's still here today. Well, it, well it's gone into Papal Rome at this point. We're dealing with the religious aspect of the harlot world religion. Okay. And again, I would say that that is centered in Rome and has something to do with the Vatican. And the Papal Rome, the, the crimes and sins there, expelled Jews from Spain in 1492 A.D., expelled them from Portugal in 1497 A.D., killed tens of thousands of Jews in the Crusades, mm. hundreds of thousands of Protestants, if not millions, in the Reformation. Mm. Uh, so it's responsible for at least 100,000 victims of sexual abuse uh, in this country. What about worldwide? So, uh, and these are just a few of the rap sheet of the crimes and sins. So uh, that's a concern. But I think the main thing that gets me thinking along the lines, you know, we're dealing with a world religion that's going to come on the scene at a time, I believe, after the rapture, when Satan is no longer going to be restrained from putting forward his closing arguments. The world's going to be in a run amok as we have the seal judgments being opened. You've got uh, wars are going to happen. You've got famines and pestilences. And, and there's going to be this, this global government that establishes itself at a time when Satan is now free to unleash lying signs and wonders and deception. And when he's free to do that, he's known he's going to have the freedom to do that, according to Paul in 2 Thessalonians. He's not going to go, oi vey, what do I do now? What system do I embrace? What do I implement? I believe there's a system he's already put in place that has an end game, that's got supernatural deception fringes all around it with Eucharistic miracles and Marian apparitions and things like that. that right, well, help me make the transition here because we were saying it's a city and now you're saying it's a religious system. Is it both encompassed in Mystery Babylon? It is a religious system that is centered in a great city. It okay. has a headquarters. Well, now, I, I believe that God is going to judge Islam not only in the Psalm 83 war and the Gog and Magog war, because that's only the Middle East. And the vast majority of Muslims are outside the Middle East, the largest Muslim country in the world. Uh, is outside. You know, we, you've, you've got Indonesia and places like that. I think he's going to judge Islam through the wars of the Antichrist because it indicates that the Antichrist is going to launch a war to conquer the world. And I think he, uh, the, the people who will most obviously rebel against him will be the Muslims. And I think that God will judge the Muslims through that. That leaves what religion for the Antichrist? I think the Bible indicates there's two. He starts out with one, builds his empire, destroys it, and then creates another. Comment on that. Well, the way I look at that is you've got a religious double jeopardy in the end times after the <laughs> like rapture. <laughs> well, you've got, you've got the harlot in Revelation 17, okay? She is, uh, it says that she's sitting on the beast, the Antichrist, in Revelation 17, it's verse not 3. The Revelation 17, 7 says, he carries her to her heights. So he's playing a little bit subservient role, second fiddle initially as this system builds itself up. But at some point it overextends its usefulness and becomes problematic. And yes. we're told in Revelation 17, 16 that He, with the unity of ten kings, will destroy this harlot world's yes. religion, desolate it. But then all of a sudden now it says they give their kingdom and the power to the Antichrist at that point. And then of course He puts together His kingdom. And I, I take attention to Revelation 13. That's where you have the mark of the beast set up. Yes. He, it looks like he's been assassinated. He gets a mortal head wound. Uh, and some his false say prophet can... heads up a new world religion. Yeah. And then, then we find that there's another des des desolation in one hour in Revelation 18. Mm -hmm. Babylon no, no longer exists anymore. It'll be thrown down forever. So I deviate a little bit. And there's other people like uh, Hal Lindsey and others who say, Revelation 17 is that system. It gets desolated by the ten kings. You go to religious Revelation. Religious system. Religious system. You go to Revelation okay. 13. The Antichrist now has his time in the sun where mm -hmm. no one can buy or sell. And they take, let's say, take a mark in their, upon their right hand or upon their forehead. And, and then God judges worship. that. Well, since yeah. this, this religion that he uses at the beginning to, to build, uh, since it is centered in Rome, 
And since it has the blood of the martyrs on its hands, it seems to me this has to be Catholicism in some form in which he uses this as a world religion and it uh, encompasses the religions of the world. Would you agree with that or not? I absolutely do. You know, some people advocate that this is going to be some kind of ecumenical super church. But so. how do the Ten Kings desolate Wicca and Judaism and yes. Hinduism? And, uh, you know, the Catholic Church, who is all millennial, they're not waiting for the pre trib mm -hmm. rapture. They're going to be, the institution is going to be left behind. And, and I believe there's biblical prophecies about that. And they say they're the one true church, and they're going to argue that fact and say, we are the one true church. Second now, they may reach out ecumenically to the, the, the nations of the, the religions of the world and embrace them, but they will not change their doctrine that they are the one true church and that salvation comes through the Catholic church, not just saved by grace through well, faith. I, I got a sense of this, though, a few years ago. I think it was when Pope Paul was in position. I think he was the one who called for all of the religious leaders of the world to come to Assisi in Italy. And he said, let's come together and each one of you pray to your own God. Wow. And I thought, what? And he even had an American Indian chief there who did a powwow dance. In fact, he stole the attention of everyone. But all these people, and the Dalai Lama was there who is supposed to be God, and they're praying to whatever God. And I thought, Boy, this is, this is a, a view of what it's going to be like in the end times when you, you have this umbrella religion that calls everybody in. That's right. It will be the canopy over it all. But the reality is that it's going to be the dominant aspect. It, you know, it would be and it's going to become more dominant, and that's the reason that's right. the Antichrist and is going to brings up a good point in one of his commentaries. He says, "Look, it would be easy to you know take out the Pope and the bishops and the cardinals and take out the institution, and confiscate all of its wealth and put your institution in, in, instead of that with the Antichrist scenario." So he's he's one who would advocate that as well. Welcome back to Christ in Prophecy. Bill, one quick question before we end, and that is, if the mystery Babylon religion is destroyed by the Antichrist, what religion does he set up? Well, I believe that it, he will be probably putting together a New Age type religion. That's what my favorite choice on that is. You know, we realize that it won't be Islam. That will be taken out in those Muslim wars we talked about prior. It will no longer be Catholicism because that became problematic. It won't be Judaism because he's going to go along and try to commit genocide of the Jews. It's going to boil down in the end times to true Christianity and the false religion of the Antichrist, which I believe will be filled with supernatural deception and lies. It will be a time when the paranormal is the new normal. Satan worship. It will be. That's what it sounds you know, like. Satan's told Adam and Eve, uh, you could become like God. This, this Antichrist may come along and say, here's, I'm going to show you how. Yes, so, it, it's going to be humanism carried to it, 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 its extreme, to its yeah, ultimate. Yeah, absolutely. But it, whatever it is, it's going to be bad. And that's why we don't want people to go through it. We want them to know Jesus Christ okay. right Amen. now. Yeah. Well, could you look in the camera, Bill? And again, tell us how we get in touch with you and get your wonderful resources. Great. Well, thanks again for having me on the show. What a wonderful topic, uh, <laughs> Mystery Babylon. Well, listen, you can reach me at prophecydepot.com, articles, TV shows, etc., all there, prophecydepot.com. Well, Bill, it's always a joy to have you with us, and uh, you keep uh, going out there where nobody will go <laughs> and uh, challenging us, okay? Well, I'll do that, David. Well, folks, that's our program for today. I hope it's been a blessing to you, and I hope the Lord willing that you'll be back with us again next week. Until then, this is Dave Reagan speaking for Lamb and Lion Ministries saying, look up, be watchful, for our redemption is drawing near. Thank you for joining us on today's Christ in Prophecy, a presentation of Lamb and Lion Ministries, a non-denominational ministry dedicated to teaching the fundamentals of biblical prophecy and proclaiming the soon return of Jesus.